All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our BCBA 5th edition task list series with D4, advantages of single subject designs compared to group designs. Now, D4 is a little tricky and I debated not doing it, but I did it for continuity sakes. I just want you to keep in mind that D4 is not saying group designs are bad. Group designs are historically and traditionally the common design used in especially psychology, but also education and many other social sciences and experimentation. What D4 is doing is showing the reason we choose single subject and ABA. What benefits does single subject bring compared to group design? That's what we're saying in D4. Not that group designs are bad, but that single subject designs hold some benefit for what we're looking to achieve. So walk away from D4, not thinking group designs are bad, but rather what advantages are there with single subject designs. Now with that said, please like and subscribe if you have not already, we would appreciate it. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack and practice exams. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard, let's get going. All right, D4. Starting again, a reminder, the individual subject is crucial in behavior analysis research. Now, you might say, well, I do day treatment, or I work in a school, or I work in any setting where we're in a group setting. While that may be true, our focus is still on the individual person, their behavior, and their effect, and the environment's effect on that behavior. We're always focused on the individual subject. So a major difference between single subject designs and group designs is that with group designs, we're looking at a larger sample rather than the individual. So again, the common design in psychology, education, and many other sciences for decades, traditionally, the between group design. And how does it work? Well, a group of subjects, misspelled, or randomly placed into groups, a pretest and post-test are given, there's a control group and an intervention group. That's simply put. So when you think of experiments prior to ABA, this is likely what you think of. You have group one, group two. Group one is your control, does not get intervention. Group two gets intervention. And we compare changes, pretest to post-test, group to group, right? That's what typically we think of in experiments. With single subject, it's not how it works because each individual subject gets the intervention, and then we compare the inter the subject's changes to their own changes, meaning their own they're their own control. So that's a primary difference. It's almost like we are emphasizing the individual over the group in single subject design. Now, why do we do this, and what is the advantage? Well, group data, when we say this data, we mean group data, could mask individual performance and mask variability across different individuals. It lacks replication and may not represent real processes. Again, we're generalizing here. We're not saying group designs are bad. We're just saying here are some reasons single subject gives us an advantage. So let's start with one and two. And all four reasons are very similar, but let's begin with one and two. Number one, group data may not represent individual subject performance. Number two, group data may mask variability. Now, why do we why do we say that? What do we mean by that? When we have group designs, we're typically looking at the results of the group as a whole. Typically, um, a, a change in the mean, a change across groups, a change group one to group two, and we're looking at the group as a whole. So, if we're looking for individual subject performance, we're not really getting that. Now, we may have data for each individual subject, but in group designs, all that is typically aggregated to get means, and then you can compare those means to look for change. The same way, you can't really look at variability because everything is just averaged out. So if you've got one subject, huge outlier, and they're going, and their data path is bouncing all over the place, extremely variable, that might not affect the overall picture of the data. Let's say you have 50 participants, that one data point where you've got this one participant who's just reacting in a totally abnormal way to the intervention, that's going to be lost in the group design. So think about that. 49 of the participants may react how you expect. The one doesn't, 
isn't that one person pretty interesting compared to the 49? Arguably, yes. And group data, though, there's a good chance we miss that. So we're getting more of the average performance of a group of subjects rather than each individual. So even if some improve and skew the average, it, it, we, we might not know that. It may indicate that treatment is generally effective for, let's say, a sample of people or that a sample of people respond differently to the same treatment, but really based on the average of a large group. So let's look at this comparison from the Cooper book, right? And so if we look at our group mean, which is this line here, okay, it's the same pre-test to post-test. So meaning the intervention happened here, the mean hasn't changed. But look at the subjects, right? Subject A here, and then subject B, and then look at all the different changes post-test. However, the average hasn't changed, meaning we missed, if we went by the mean, we missed all the changes pre-test to post-test. So that's one of the disadvantages of group designs compared to single subject designs. Three, group data may not demonstrate real behavior processes. What do we mean by that? Well, group designs eliminate the effects of continued behavior, behavior processes. Think about a reversal design and where we introduce an intervention and then withdraw that intervention. Well, the intervention's already happened. We can't undo whatever that client may have learned or unlearned. And it's just something that's part of behavior. In a group design, however, we're going to give different groups different interventions. Meaning, if we had, let's say, three conditions in a single subject design, the subject would be on the FR1, and then they'd be on the FR3, and then they'd be on the VR3. In a group design, we'd have three groups. Group 1 on FR1, Group 2 on FR3, Group 3 on VR3. So we're not really getting an indication of how each condition is affecting the individual. In single subject, though, if we started with an FR1 and then moved to an FR3, well, the time spent on an FR1 is going to affect the behavior on an FR3. So that's what we mean when it may not demonstrate real behavior processes. You might miss some of those effects of prior interventions and prior learning. And, and these are important when we're looking at behavior and when we're examining behavior because it it matters, right? This is where the ideas of things like fading comes from and shaping. If we'd done this in a group and and we fade something and let's say there's ratio strain for three of the 50 participants, that might have been missed in a true group design. So again, a group design may separate the interventions by groups and miss these behavior changing effects. And then finally, Group design lacks intrasubject replication. Now, replication is an issue across all sciences, and no science has perfected it. All right, so that's a big problem in all of our sciences. But since interventions are all done in groups, the effects across the individual subjects are sacrificed. So we can't really replicate subject to subject. It's it's all based on that group number. So again, if those there are some outliers or anomalies within that group. We're not really capturing that. So in single subject designs, data from each subject is used to determine how the experiment is impacting the subject. And group data lacks the individual performance implications. So what we're really missing in group design are these individual performance implications. What does this say about the individual rather than the group? Because in, in ABA, behavior analysis, we're, we're very much focused on the individual and their behavior change. Again, take all of this almost at face value, right? Where we're not saying group designs are bad or wrong. We're trying to give advantages of why we're, we use single subject. And the main thing is we're focused on that individual change. The single subject really provides a, a deeper picture of the individual compared to group designs, which are much more focused on the whole of the population. As always, check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. Please like, subscribe, let us know when you pass, work hard, study hard. We'll see you soon.